With everything going on these days, it's no wonder prepping has become a big thing. Some of you have been prepping for years, while others started recently as they saw things getting worse. And while I'm not here to talk about how to prep or stock food, I want to share with you a list of all the electronics I use daily that I think can help you to get through different SHDF situations, even a zombie apocalypse, and help alleviate some of the stress during that time. We've all become extremely addicted to having these little devices in our pockets that are somewhat even better than Spock's tricorder, encompassing everything from your pocket calculator, your sweet comments to your better half, and the incriminating evidence of that trip to Las Vegas. <laughs> Beautiful pictures of your wife and kids. But what happens when that device gets disconnected from the collective and left to think for itself because the internet is down as well as cell towers and there's a power failure? Have no fear people, for the EDs are here and you might still have all of these items tucked away in a box in the garage or available for peanuts at your local thrift store so you won't have to lose a slice of your paycheck in the jungle. With communications down, you'll need some way to keep in touch while you're out and about looking for food or that much needed medication. Many of the old walkie-talkies, such as the ones from Radio Shack, featured in shows like Stranger Things, are not necessarily a thing of the past. While they are a little bit bulky, they are rugged and you would be surprised at how well these perform and can be easily modified and fixed. Plus, their size gives you a cool retro look and as a bonus, because they're so massive, they can be used as a weapon should you run out of ammo. Needless to say, when communications are down and especially the web, AM, FM and shortwave radios will be your go-to item to be able to listen to any emergency broadcasts and find out what's going on. These older radios are very robust and powerful, drawing from large D batteries rather than two double A's. Many have the extra options of plugging them in and some even have the weather and aviation channels. In my opinion, the reception of these solid state radios is far better than any of the new cheaply made gadget riddled models and can be found at the thrift store for a fraction of the price of a new one. You might think a VCR or DVD player is a thing of the past, but if the internet is down and depending on the type of ensuing chaos, boredom will hit and if you're lucky enough to have a generator or solar panel to run a TV, there won't be much to watch and with no more Netflix or YouTube, you won't be able to binge watch Outlander or any of your other favorite episodes featuring Mrs. RG or get relief from an adult website. For the folks with kids, you can sit them in front of the TV and teach them all about the wonders of sticking your hand in the trapdoor of a VCR and get them to watch old Disney flicks or The Incredible Hulk. It'll be a time for you to get acquainted with complete seasons of the Dukes of Hazzards or the original saga of the Carringtons and a time to find and dust off that old copy of Big Sauce <laughs> sitting in a box somewhere in the attic. When it comes to music today, most are using streaming services like YouTube Music, Spotify or iTunes on their portable tracking devices while old school folks are still using CD and cassette players. Retro boom boxes that operate on batteries are a great way to have music around the house should there also be a power failure while smaller sized Walkman or portable CD players will be able to play music for hours. Most of these can be found in thrift stores for under $10 with a plethora of available titles from your classical music to your favorite 80s music hits. And seriously, is there anything else on the radio even in 2022? I don't remember when someone last asked what time it was and be honest, when's the last time you looked at your watch? A good old Casio watch with a battery that lasts a few years is certainly a must to keep track of how long you've been hiding out or know when you should head out to find the lost member of your group gone scavenging. As an added bonus, some come with a calculator. Well, it's not like we ever used it in the 80s either, but it was cool to look at. Passing time might get boring, and it's not like you'll be able to tell your kids to go outside and play, so a bunch of old handheld video games might come in handy for both you and the kids. Some might lack the 3D graphics of today's game, and while there are more advanced handheld devices, many require battery packs that might not be available or be able to get recharged. Older games will run on a couple of AA batteries, and there's nothing like spending hours playing a game like Electronic Quarterback and getting that little bar from one side of the screen to the other. As humans, we like to document everything with pictures and videos and it certainly plays an important part of history when trying to piece together what happened. Unfortunately today, we use cameras for little more than to document one's appearance and share it with countless others who review and rate your hard work from the comfort of their private office. A good old camera with some film in it, or even an old digital camera that operates on regular AA batteries might be a good way to document everything so that people in the future will post a bunch of pics on their social media profiles about your brush with death. 
Everyone enjoys sleeping in, although I do notice as I'm getting older that I tend to wake up before the sun rises but then need my afternoon siestas. Regardless, during hard times you'll still have to get up in the morning and even more so because it'll be the time to get your gear ready and gather food for tonight's dinner. And while you'll get over the fact that this is not an electronic gadget, a good old wind-up alarm clock from the 70s should do the trick and keep you from counting too many sheep. Imagine you finally hear a broadcast and someone tells you to get to these coordinates for continued survival except you don't know how to get there. You can try to find a paper map and try to remember your boy scout or girl scout training or have an old GPS on hand. Although you can buy yourself a new or handheld GPS or still have some charge left in your smartphone, some of these old GPS operate on regular batteries and can be found for about $10 at, you guessed it, the good old thrift store. With everything gone digital, you'll need to stock up on different types of media for the items mentioned. You might even have some in your attic. All VHS tapes, cassettes, CDs, DVDs and games can all be found at garage sales or local thrift stores for a dollar or two. While you're at it, you might want to pick up the Lord of the Rings books to keep you busy for a while or Twilight series depending on your taste. It's also a good idea to pick up some old encyclopedias. Remember those? Since in a good way, online encyclopedias will not function, thus you won't be able to get everyone's opinion and have to rely on good old researched and fact-based books. Oh, and P.S. Stock up on batteries. They're cheap, they can be stored for 10 years and will be able to operate all this stuff for quite a while. In conclusion, no one desires for shizzy to hit the fizzy as they say, but you never know. The power grid might go down, there could be a massive cyber attack, or we'll finally get our long-awaited zombie apocalypse. We've all been wanting to return to older times, whether it be the 60s, 70s, 80s, or even the 90s, and we might be getting our wish after all of returning to a less complicated time of dreaming of all the possibilities the future could bring without actually making the same mistakes again. Thanks for watching.